Welcome back. This is the solution to the last exercise of problem sheet 2. Here we are again coming back to C4V being a subgroup of OH and we use this to construct a three-dimensional representation and reduce it to its irreducible components. The first thing you have to notice is that what I wrote down here is just what you've already derived in the script. For example these two lines here is uh, on, can be seen in page 8 of the script. It's just that I take all elements of C4V and try to describe it how they behave in a three-dimensional Euclidean space and how the coordinates transform. The table over here you, you can recognize as the character table of C4V and you already derived that on page 42. The important thing you have to notice is that this is all you need. From this the three-dimensional representation immediately follows and with the help when you constructed that three-dimensional representation and look at this character table you already got the irreducible components. So this exercise is taking this and this as, as given fairly easy. We write down the three-dimensional representation and what do we what do we mean by writing this down? We already discussed that in exercise 3 in problem set 1. It means that we take an arbitrary vector in three dimension and see which matrix element corresponds to transforming that vector into the new vector. The identity of course is the identity matrix. Here we're just filling out what we see from above. We're here, for example, if we take C2, we negate both X and Y coordinates, which corresponds to taking one, a rotation of 180 degrees. Here we just take the inverse of C4 and the mirror planes. It's not difficult at all. Here we're, when we mirror at the diagonal, we either exchange the x and y coordinates and negate them, or we just exchange them. This is it. This is the three-dimensional representation of C4V. How do we find its irreducible components? Of course, look at the characters. So this is 3. If we look at the trace right here, it's 1, this is minus 1. It's really easy to compute and it's a good exercise. Plus 1, 1, 1, 1. Now we look at the character table over here and we see via trial and error which irreducible representations to add to get these characters. And therefore we conclude that T3D is equal to delta 5 plus delta 1. And a quick sanity check gives that the dimension of delta 5 plus the dimension of delta 1 is indeed 3, which is the dimension of our T3D representation. With the same way you can check that these irreducible components are indeed correct, for example with the decomposition theorem applied on the delta 1 representation we take 1 eighth, then we take 3 times 1 times 1 is 3, then we take here 1 times 2 times 1 is 2, then we have minus 1 times 1 times 1 is minus 1 with the same way plus 2 plus 2 it's equal to 1. With the same you can say delta 1 prime, delta 2, delta 2 prime have no components, T3D has no components of these three representations in it and delta 5 is again 1, once represented by T3D. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next week.